good morning YouTube fam or good afternoon or good evening whenever you're watching this for me it's morning it is 8 a.m. 8.03 a.m. and it is another weekend in the life vlog now this intro is gonna be so brief because it is 8.03 I have an 8.30 appointment to go get my hair blown out from dry bar I talked about it I think in my last vlog but my hair is in its wash and go state if you watch my last vlog you saw the ending of that the wash and go was poofed it was big I had to re-wash and go my hair midweek Wednesday because it started too voluminous. That's what I talk about in my wash and go videos. My hair, I like it tighter to the face so that it can grow to be voluminous. I'm not trying to walk out the house with poof be gone on the very first day. Issue was I didn't deep condition long enough in my last vlog, I knew it. So I deep conditioned for hours this time and I got the perfect wash and go and I hate to see it go. But I'm loving the fact that I'm going to at least get to experience blowout season quickly from a place that I don't know if they're gonna do a good job. You're gonna see with me if they actually do a good job because I know typically they are made for different texture hair. Different texture hair typically are their patrons, but let's see if they can do something with my hair. It's a $50 loss. I think the price was $49.99. It's a $50 loss if it goes left, but it's a win if it goes right. So let's go see if it goes right. I came in my other room because the lighting is better in here to talk about my hair. And if you hear Winnie in the background, she's having a moment. She's having a Winnie. Get your get your vlog time in. Let's get your moment. This is your moment to shine. She dislikes when she has to stay in the room for a little bit, so she has to show out when she's out. But nonetheless, this is my hair. I had a little bit more body when I left, but let me turn around so you can see the drop on my hair, droppity drop. 
drop it, drop, drop. Love it. Um, so they did an incredible job. She did an incredible job. I cannot remember her name right now. And I feel so bad because I was like, I need to request her going forward because I do think this is my new place for blowouts. Like I do believe my stylist, y'all know I love Tony, And I feel so bad being a people pleaser. I feel so bad that I'm like, I might need to put Tony on reserve for special occasions and when I need my trims and stuff only because I love Tony. Again, I would suggest anybody if you're in the Charlotte area, go to my stylist Tony. I have rode with her for the last six plus years. She started off doing my shampoos for my other stylist. So she did shampoo. She had her own clients, but she would do the shampoos for my original stylist. I loved her work so much that I started going to her as my core stylist six years ago. And then of course, I started getting into crochet hair. So it was not a routine of going to her. But when I did get my hair done, it was her. She's grown. She's blown up so much. She's able to kind of dictate her own schedule and not have to work as much as she used to. So she sent her email yesterday because her books open the 15th of every month. Today's the 15th as I'm recording this. Today is Saturday, October 15th. Her books open today at one. So in a couple minutes, her books open. So future people want to book with her remember that they open for the next month so her november books open 30 minutes from now but in her email she says she only works now wednesday thursday friday i love that for her come a long way to be able to only work three days out of the week shoot i want to work three days out of the week i want to be able to make my schedule into that way but she works with clients because she does teach I've talked about this in other videos. She teaches like how to do silk presses. So she still has her teaching side of the business. Um, but clients in terms of doing their own hair, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Love that for her. But today's Saturday and I want my hair done on Saturday. Like I, I want my hair done on Saturdays. Like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm working. She works eight to five. I work eight to five. Like you see how them things ain't lining up. And I, you know, used to have to take days off and do stuff like that. And I would 100% do that all over again. But just for convenience and kind of price because this was $49.99 now she did put a I'll put on screen I can't remember what it was but liquid glass she said it would really help my hair and I was like I'll trust you so that was a $15 add-on so $49.99 plus that liquid glass $15 add-on this was her suggestion and I, again I was like I'll, I'll trust you I was again a little nervous because I had good things on TikTok about dry bar for people with afro textured hair um however just the other day I saw this TikTok I'll insert it right now whatever black girls on TikTok are sitting here saying go to dry bar stop listening to them I listened to them I went to dry bar in San Francisco my hair looks stupid this is not several days old this is not even hours this is minutes after leaving the salon my appointment started at 6 i got back at 8 30. my roots are puffy my middle part is off center um she burnt the back of my head where she's talking about her experience and she just didn't have a good experience but i was already booked and but i was reading through the comments and i felt i felt better about it just because a lot of the comments were saying that's your dry bar experience. And it's really the stylist in the dry bar, not dry bar the establishment. I think she was in San Francisco. I'm all the way on the other side of the country in North Carolina. You know, my stylist isn't the same person who she went to. My dry bar isn't that same dry bar. We have two in Charlotte. So my dry bar, which I went to the one in South Park is not the dry bar in South End. There's one in South End too. They're two different dry bars. So I know that it just depends on who that person is that's doing your hair. There are probably hundreds of not thousands of dry bar associates. So you really just have to go to the right one. And I didn't know whether I was going to the right one because I didn't pick. I just put in the notes of the comments when I was booking that I do have three C four A hair. So that, you know, whatever you guys decide on your end, I let you guys know I'm coming in with not anybody else who around me had the same hair. None of the clients who were in there at that time had the same hair texture as me. However, she got it done. She got me together. I had to turn my fan on because I started getting a little hot. Today, it's like a warm day. I chose a very warm day to do this. I think this year, because I'm, I'm trying to still save for that house, the saving for the house is still going. I'm trying to maneuver where I can with expenses where it makes sense. Somebody commented on my last 
video, the streams video, which I just put up Wednesday or Thursday of this week as I'm recording this. As you're watching this, you've seen it a while ago, but I put it up. Somebody was like, the one thing I miss about your channel is your financial journey videos. Like I wish that you could be that transparent again. In my mind, I'm like, I miss doing them, but like, I don't think I would still be doing them even if I could be that transparent on here just because I'm in saving, saving, savings mode. Like I was talking about in my financial journey videos, I would be paying off my debts, my credit cards, my car, I had a car payment back then. Like I was in a different space. Now my only debt is my student loan and I'm not in a like pay it off crazy. I'm just trying to pay it down until it gets to 10,000 so that that can be taken care of. So I'm not paying it as aggressively as like, I'm trying to get this out out of the way like it's okay because it's not negatively affecting me it's not negatively affecting my credit score to have that so I wouldn't have a lot of updates if I were still doing my financial journey video it will really be about home savings right now which I'm in hyper mode with that I'm in this Facebook group I think it's called first time home buyers if you are first time home buyer join that group because I love that Facebook group love it love it love it it is amazing if you are thinking about it because there's so much good conversation being had but it's a lot of transparency in the sense of like it makes me a little depressed about buying a home soon it really does but I, I don't want to be here next year like I don't want to be in this apartment next year now there's anything wrong with but I want my next place to be my home but this interest it's the interest that's killing us I know the home is coming for me that's the only update I have on my financial journey is that it's just about saving for a home somebody commented on one of my videos that you're putting a lot of effort you don't have to have a huge down payment and I'm like no you don't have to have a huge down payment. I, I want to alleviate if I can offset if I can offset I want to that's how some people feel about car like getting a car oh you don't have to have no money down no money down you can get this car but if you can have money down it doesn't hurt like never saving for a down payment whether it's for a car or a home is ever a bad thing and speaking of savings you saw my vlog I went Went to snooze um afterwards which last vlog i went to the plaza midwood snooze couldn't find a parking spot because plaza midwood if you're familiar with charlotte <laughs> parking is a joke um and they had a long wait there i went to this snooze which i went at 9 45 my hair took an hour and three minutes my appointment was at 8 30 i was out of there not an hour and three minutes an hour and 13 minutes hour 13 minutes I was out by 9 45 and I was across the street at snooze got there by 10 and it was still so packed I mean 10 minutes later the bar was packed like I sat at the bar and there was a couple seats when I got there after that honey it was packed it was packed so snooze was so good um and then I went to South Park which if you're familiar with Charlotte you know is our bougie mall I'm proud of myself because I didn't get anything um however <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was at Nordstrom's like a week ago because I got something. I got something. So I bought um, this bag. Um, it's a TBZ Tory Burch. I actually don't think I got this from Nordstrom. Now that I think about this, I got this the other week from Tory Burch. They're having their fall event sale um, and I got it for one something I don't know it was on sale it was on sale so that's why I felt better about the purchase I made the week before at Nordstrom um which was the coach tabby bag I like this bag this is my first coach bag I do not have any coach bags I don't have any toy birch bags I don't think I have that belt that you guys see me wear all the time and I, I wear the slides all the time toy birch is my favorite corporate brand and what I mean is like if the girls who get it get it and what I mean is when I go to work could I you know buy a, a Louis could I buy a Chanel Gucci type of a bag sure I'm sure not maybe not Chanel did I say Chanel in there who do I think I am I love Tory Burch because it's affordable but it's like corporate baddie it's corporate baddie to me one of my co-workers who found you guys know my last vlog my co-workers now know that I have a YouTube channel hoping they still don't watch hoping that they don't watch but one of my co-workers who saw my Instagram page she's found me on Instagram I tried to tell them that I ran a hair only page so that they felt no needs to go out and search me but they still went out and searched me and they still went out and found me on Instagram and she said oh my god you talk more than about hair I saw one of your videos 
shoes and you have like a YSL bag. And I do not wear that YSL bag to work. Absolutely not, never will, never have because YSL to me is like, I don't ever want people at work to think they're overpaying me. That's what I always heard. I always heard you don't, even if you could, you shouldn't at work just because you never want them to think you overpay you. Again, you don't never want to walk in. Why would I want to walk in with the Chanel Burberry down, Gucci down to the socks? And then they're thinking, oh, oh she got it. She got it. I don't care if y'all paying me $200,000 a year, $250,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Whatever I have outside of here, whatever I have here or there, I could always use a raise. I could always use a raise. So I don't think my having a Chanel bag right now on my person would scream or Hermes would scream, you know, raise time. But I feel like I, I love Tori. I love what she does with subtle fashion. I love my Marc Jacobs bag. I love my coach Tabby now. I wore this to work um, the other week and I was just I loved this for work. It was such a cute bag. And this isn't to say you guys don't wear your LV, your Gucci, your Burberry. Like wear every label that you want to wear to work. I'm just saying I need them to think of me humbly. I, I need them to think of me as moderate. I need to wrap my hair up because it is warm today. It's still press season so you would think. However, um, it is 80 degrees as the high today I think or 79. I'll put on the screen right now what it says. It's warm okay warm and toasty today and so maybe silk press season starts next week because i saw some 50s i saw some degrees in the 50s in the next week but i need to make sure my home is good and, and cool because i want this to last me Sunday. I am up. I know I'm wearing the same dress that I had on yesterday. I tend to when I'm filming just wear something that I've already worn that I you know can film in. You just run out of shirts like I have what over 600 videos on my channel. I have so many like things that I need to repeat themselves at some point. So I'm like, why not just wear this dress? I am filming a video today though, because I got another comment in one of my videos that I don't do makeup tutorials anymore. And one of the main reasons is because they don't perform well on my channel. But I decided um, since I didn't have a lot to film this weekend, why not do a makeup tutorial? I'm just gonna do the same exact look I wore yesterday, which is more my everyday look. It's not a lot of makeup. Like yesterday, I didn't have on eyeshadow. It's really what I wear if I have to go into the office and I'm not trying to be full glammed out but it's gonna be everything is purchasable on Amazon because I do wear a lot of cheap affordable makeup like people think like I love Sephora I am Sephora Rouge and I do purchase a lot from Sephora but it's mostly skincare nowadays it's not as much of that high-end I do love my Makeup Forever HD foundation I am starting to love my hourglass highlighter for like a very subtle look. I'm loving my Anastasia lips and all of that stuff, but there are a lot of products that I can get away with that are drugstore or $30 and less type products. So that's what I'm gonna be filming this morning.
So I just had breakfast. It is now 12.35 p.m. So it's afternoon. Very productive morning with the filming. But today is a heavy admin day for my, my channel as well as my digital product that I wanna launch. If you watch my stream video, you watch my last vlog, I talked about it. I'm not telling exactly what the product is, but I am working on that today. I really need to get some progress done on both. And so I got a comment on my last video, the streams video two comments actually about time management because I talked about you know I have a full-time job I do YouTube and then I want to launch something on top of that some people asked about time management and how I'm able to do that and how I juggle it I don't think the answer can be answered in like a quick little comment so that's why I was like I'll just kind of tack it onto this video and just talk about time management the first thing you have to ask yourself is are you good with time management now without having those things that's a hard thing to train on if you don't currently have good time management skills I don't know if I'm the person who can take somebody who doesn't have it and then transform them into somebody with t good time management skills I'm rarely if ever the late friend i'm always punctual i work in a calendar system my mind works in numbers i think that's why i wanted to be originally an accountant i know it's boring but numbers don't lie and math doesn't change the same thing goes with numbers when it comes to time the clock is a clock it's a 24-hour day and you have to work within that and no routines in that pattern so if i know i'm going to dinner with my friends at eight i know how long it takes me to do my makeup because I've been doing this my entire life so I factor that in I factor in the travel time to the location I factor in how is my hair gonna look and I buffer in time for that how long does it take me to get dressed those are variables that do not change the only thing you can account for is if you know hard trouble things happen but I'm rarely the late friend because I work in reality of time. I know how long it takes me to get ready. So I know that if I have to be there at eight, then I might need to start getting ready at five to take my shower to do my makeup and all of that. And I'm usually always 10 minutes early to most events because I maybe overcompensate in time. Time with my life when it comes to other things is that same thing. I work in routines, I work in numbers and I, and I love planning. I love I don't know it's just, it's just something I love to do but you don't have to be a planner loving person so I'm gonna just show you an example of how like I do my life very quickly in this video but I'm gonna screen record so you can see I love my iPad my iPad is my lifeline if you're seeing the screen right now you see I don't have a lot on it the second page is literally just the other versions of the apps on this page. I like it to be very aesthetic on this page as possible. But how do I plan things? So this is my planner. I chose a random day. This is in December um, because every other day I think I just have things that identify too much on them. So I decided to just go to a random day on a calendar. But how I organize my day is you just look at it and I work nine to five, really 8.30 to uh, 5 p.m. So this is all work. That is all my f nine to five job. And I don't do anything outside of my nine to five except for my nine to five. Like I don't, some people are like, well, I can do my side business on the side. It just doesn't work for me. On my normal days, I would type in exactly what I'm doing. So if I'm interviewing a candidate, interview with Mike at that time, I'll put that on my calendar. And that'll be, maybe I'm interviewing him from 10 to, my interviews typically last about, I try not to do more than 30 minutes because I'm trying to be respectful of their time. Or I have an interview with Jan at another time. So on my regular days, I typically type in what I'm doing. I do use my calendar that reminds me on Outlook, but for my mind, looking at my digital planner, which is always with me when I'm at my desk, I just utilize this. And so if I have a meeting, I go to my stickers. I have a bunch of stickers in here. I might have lunch at noon, put that in there. I'm gonna have a meeting. Maybe I have a meeting at, let's say 9.30. And then maybe I have another meeting at two o'clock throughout my day. So this is just, I mean, my work day is my work day. 
That's simple. I mean, I know what I'm going to be doing from 8.30 to 5, and it's not going to be Lee Levon. It's not going to be my digital products. That's the easiest part of my day to keep organized. That's a no-brainer. That's how that kind of works. But then you're thinking about throwing in something else in there. So what else do I do? I do my channel. So I always upload on Monday, Wednesday. I'm using Thursday as an example today, but let's just pretend like this is a Wednesday. I would go down, maybe have an upload upload today so uploading at 6 which is when I upload let's just say I'm posting a review video on this day so I've got a review going live I also need to remind myself hey post a photo on Instagram and post a photo on TikTok at that same time as well um, so that I have those two things going live so that's led me up until about 6 so I upload at 6 and I used to always upload at 6 because it gave me time to get home from work on Monday Wednesday so I've been doing this since before I was virtual so Monday I would get off at 5 and then I would drive home and then at home I get home maybe around 6 ish and so that I would post and that's just continued even post COVID even post working remotely four out of five days of the week um, I still keep that six upload time because it's the same for most people most people probably wind down get off of work and start you know sitting down and having time to themselves around six o'clock so I don't want to be posting while people are at work or in that travel from work time frame if they too are traveling from work so they get off at five that type of thing I know it's different with the time zone somebody might be watching me on the west coast six o'clock is 3 p.m for them but i try to think in an eastern standard time just because it works with me um and then after that what do i do i start editing typically i mean i'm always editing i always have a video ready to go so i might edit a video don't know what i would edit let's say i have an install video i just did a review maybe i have an install and i'm ready to post i typically try my goal now is to not spend more than two hours editing. Easier said than done, but try to spend at least two hours editing. And I try to cook at least, not every day, but at least three out of the seven days out of the week, I try to cook and have leftovers for later so that every single night is not a cooking night. Like every single night can't be a cooking night when you work under these type of parameters because when are you gonna, cooking is an hour in itself. So you have to factor that in. If I cook on a certain night, then I know I'm not gonna have as much editing time because I still wanna keep to the parameters of what I have going on. And then now, now that I have this digital product, I'm going to spend pretty much the evening, the remainder of the evening after my editing, I'm going to spend that on the digital product that I'm working on. So try to spend two hours on that digital product. And that leads me to going to bed. Uh, really, it has been around like 11.30 recently, but I, I try to wake up later because of that. Now my body naturally tries to wake up around 6.45, seven-ish, which if I get to bed by midnight, uh, that's almost seven hours of sleep almost maybe 11 45 like I gotta you know your body just doesn't go to sleep when you tell it you gotta kind of wind down so take my little melatonin drink my little wine and let my body do what my body's gonna do with falling asleep but that's how I organize my time now does it leave a lot of time for other things if I had like a child to take care of where would I put that bathing time feeding them time engaging with them time reading time just time with them yes that's an element that I I don't want to say luckily, but I don't I don't have to think about right now or but we're in grind season of my life right now. The way my life is organized works for me right now. So it's about dealing with the realities of times. And yes, curve balls might come into play. My mom sometimes calls me and we're on the phone for three hours. So some of this stuff just does not happen. At least going into it, knowing that I've planned my week and I've kind of planned these things allows for me to have the flexibility that if something comes up, then I know the next day I can push these things off. I'm well prepared that I have the things that I need already ready. So I have both videos I'm posting this Monday and Wednesday. Today is Sunday, Monday and Wednesday. My videos are already on YouTube. So they're already, if I go to my YouTube page right now. If I go to my YouTube studio right now, go to the content. My Wednesday video is that vlog that you see right here, which I need to put words into. And then my... Monday video, I uploaded three weeks ago. Do you see three weeks ago? 
I've had that ready to go for three weeks. It has not gone live yet. It's still private. As you can see, I uploaded it September 24th. So three weeks ago. Some people upload the same day. So they record a video and have it ready to go by that night. Never me. I filmed this video weeks ago. I had a whole different hair in and I'm just now putting it up tomorrow. So it's about proactiveness too. If I was somebody who, oh God, I have to get next week's videos ready, then, then I would have that panic and that rush. But I've been edited those videos because I'm editing almost every day. Like when I turn this camera off, I'm gonna take the film off of this vlog. I'm gonna take the film off of that makeup video I just recorded and I'm gonna start editing those too. No, they're not going up this week. I don't even think they're going up next week. They're going up at some point, but they will be probably by the end of this week already on YouTube ready to go. Ready to go. So time management is going to be about what makes sense in your life. If you're not able to dedicate five hours after going already hard at work and you can only dedicate two hours, do what you can in those two hours. You don't have to upload two videos a week, do one video a week. If your thing is I'm starting a, another business doing Instacart, I'm doing DoorDash. If you're somebody, I'm so anti MLMs, like I, do not get me started on uh, pyramid schemes and MLMs, but I know so many people out there watch me are part of the MLM, whatever. I'm not gonna judge you, but if you have to do your MLM after work, do your MLM, do your door dashes, do your embroidery business, do your um, Etsy shop. Do, if you have something that you do, just focus and put some time on your calendar. You have to kind of work around even if you don't have a written schedule, have an internal schedule where you know, okay, I do this, I do this. Routines, patterns, habits, all of these things really factor in. And I don't feel burnt out with anything that I do. I know as crazy as it sounds, I don't feel burnt out. And if I ever did, trust me, you would feel it. Trust me, you would know, you would know. So right now, not burnt out. You know, at some point, maybe burnt out and I will be transparent with you guys because I don't want to set anybody up for the okie doke. But overall, that's the vlog. I'm going to end it here, even though I have so much more to do today. It's only one o'clock, so, so much more to get accomplished today. But I want to be successful in that and I don't want to have the camera set up all through that. All you would see me doing is sitting here with my iPad for the next eight hours just editing a video or creating my digital product. I made some good headway last night in that. Like, I'm excited for that. I'm starting to be a little, a little keynote procreate type girl, but more to come on that. If you wanna stay tuned, locked in and see more, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you have that notification bell on so you're notified when I upload things. Make sure you're following me on Instagram at leahlamon89. Make sure you're following me on TikTok at just leahlamon. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.